Okay, true or false? Ha, this one, very hard. Huh? Penguins can fly. Let's chuck it out. It out. It Hi, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chuck It Out with Jane. And without Mandy, because she's not in town, but she will be back next episode. And today we have a very special guest, Su Chi. Hi, uh, my name is Su Chi, also known as Chi Wee. Okay, I want to ask why. Chiwi. <laughs> the first question. Confused, yeah. Right? yeah, I was like, Su <laughs> Chi Chiwi, okay. Why? How did how did this came up? So like a very long time ago when I was still in secondary school, I was all my friends, right? Their name is Amanda Ting Jin. So then I call her Mandy. I call my friend Jinny. Then they call me Chiwi. It's just like a nickname since I was a It's teenager. a completely opposite, like completely nothing to do with that. Very random. Yeah, very yeah, random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Random. <laughs> okay, it's cool. I mean, at least now you Google search, you can find your name, right? Correct. That's what I did also. That's why I have like this Chucky name that has nothing to do with my name. Mm. Literally regretted it. <laughs> really? <laughs> now I think of it, why did I call myself that? But it's okay, it can be Googled. <laughs> so I really want to know like how do you actually think of having the idea of being a teacher? Is it because you love kids or you love like teaching? Mm. I feel like there's no one right who like 小时候他们会觉得嗯我的梦想是要当 maybe 小时候 in primary school when you feel it I think, think you're right but not me lah definitely <laughs> oh, not me also <laughs> oh, okay so what is was your form? Uh, painter okay. actress okay lah okay lah uh, okay so how then I think when I was 17 because you have to decide right what you want to mm. major in what you want to study and I realised that I really like kids and I was mm. good with kids and then everyone around me just affirmed me like oh yeah you're so good with kids so I feel like I want to do something meaningful um, and that's why I chose education very different because some of my friends who love kids right I, mm. they will say I want to be a mother <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to become a teacher right? <laughs> so do you have like any idea like oh you want to, uh, to start a family when in a very young age Yes, actually yes. Right? Yeah, really. Right? Like what's easier so don't <laughs> Yeah, that's like my friend also. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not like a children. I don't Do you I'm like not, children I'm, not, I'm not really good with children. Okay, okay. I'm like very scared of them. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I said I say something wrong. Uh, yeah. And okay, then I become okay. like a bad influence, right? So I rather like okay, let's not okay. talk random things. And okay. I don't know what is the right boundary to set. Mm, mm, mm. So do you have like what is your first encounter with Dealing with kids. Yeah, ha. dealing with kids. Is it like your family friend? Because I'm an oldest in the family. And then uh, in my family friend group, right, I was the oldest also. So I was always like taking care of kids younger than me. But since I was like in a teenager, I volunteer a lot in like my church camp. So uh, it's like the kids camp. So I was like a teenager and I tell all these kids for like um, during the school holidays. I think the most scariest part is um, when children scream. Then you How don't do know you what do to do with it? Yeah, I don't know what to do. Like, do I like talk to them hmm. or do I like just yeah, let yeah, them yeah. scream or do I do what do I? I think every situation is different. Yeah. Sometimes I just let them scream. Like you have mango, you do put it high, then you just keep quiet down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, either that or sometimes just trying to figure out why they scream or giving them a countdown. Mm -hmm. So like a trick that I use is like, okay, you are gonna stop screaming in five, four, three. Then I slowly count down. Then like hopefully that will uh, like calm them down. I think that's smart. Mm. Okay, so for me, I am planning to start a family. Okay. So I always wanted, I mean like my, my husband wanted a kid. I always tell him, you know, right? Having a kid is not so easy. You know? It's just like, it's an entire human, you know? Oh. So I want to ask like, is parenting and teaching similar? Ooh. I think I use some parenting tips or tricks when I'm teaching. Because it's like, you're dealing with kids, yeah. right? It's kind, there are some overlaps. But then teaching is like a big group of kids. Yeah. And then parenting is usually one on one, yeah. right? So it's I think parents get more time to really understand the kid mm. and like you can do more like relationship building. Yeah. Whereas like if it's a big class, it's very hard to connect to every single yeah. child. So sometimes you have to be like, you know, the military. <laughs> like you have to make sure they all be quiet. Yeah. You have to use all these like tactics. Especially if you have a big group of children, right? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> do you have question. a favorite? I don't know, like even if you have my mom have five kids, oh. I'm pretty sure she have a favorite. Oh, but she never say, right? Never say lah, but you know what lah, the youngest one is confirmed is a favorite one. Okay, honestly, I think all teachers like the very quiet one, right? Yeah. The one who pay attention, the one's very good. Like all teachers like prefer um you know, I'm so happy to have those kind of kids in class. But yeah, I cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking about 
teaching, right? Is there any like a very significant experience that you feel you impact the kids or the kids actually bring impact to you? Is there something you can share? I think because I'm quite close to my students and also I think I'm very like cool young teacher vibe so mm. then they feel like we're friends. Mm -hmm. um, there was one time a kid told me something that was very like traumatizing that happened to her and I think that's one thing that was makes me feel like okay what I'm doing is worth it because I'm able to help her, I'm mm -hmm. able to listen and I'm able to be the adult that she trusts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's very impactful. You know, after you're teaching, sometimes when you teach, you get so tired and like mm. the kids are very angry, very naughty, yeah, right? Then you get yeah. so angry. Yeah. Um, but it's moments like this that make me feel like, okay, it's like worth it. Like, I'm, mm. I'm happy that I'm a teacher. But it's nice to have like a teacher friend mm. because I don't think there's a lot of teachers. I don't know, maybe it's just my teacher. I never have a connection with any teacher. Uh. <laughs> you just go on it. Yeah. I'm very, very angry. Every day, very angry. <laughs> I don't know how. So, yeah. how, how do you actually separate like your personal? life mm. with your students do you share everything with them hmm. not everything but i share a lot like last yeah. time like if i was to go on a date i would tell them like guys because it's mco right yeah. and it's like online school right yeah. so i'm like okay guys after class i'm going to date what do you think i should wear oh, that's <laughs> i would cute. tell them um yeah and then they would be like oh like, tell me about the date then after the next class they were like sure how's the date <laughs> oh, actually me. very cute i think oh. it's quite nice but not like everything uh, like. yeah 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 but i try to share as much as is appropriate or as much as i can yeah. so that they feel like they can share things with me as well because oh. i feel sometimes kids say Especially teenagers, we don't really tell things to our parents. I don't know about you. Yeah, you I don't teen. really tell anything. My mom just said, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Tips and tricks. So just now mm. you shared that it's nice to actually give them a little bit about your you yourself then in order for them to share things with you. Mm. That's one of the tricks, right? Mm. So what if you really have any kids that's very shy and very introvert? Because mm. I am the introvert kid. Oh, I so don't like to talk. talk. I don't talk one. Mm. Like literally, I just do my own thing. And I literally just as, just think of me as a glass. I don't want to be seen. Why? I don't know. I just don't like. So like, what, if I ask you now, like, during that yeah. time, what, what would make you feel like, oh, you can talk to this person? Or like, how did you feel like, oh, this friend is someone that I can talk to? If they have same, same interests. When I was in primary, no, not, yeah, primary, kindergarten primary, because I, I grew up in an English-speaking family and then I was sent into a Chinese school. And then I cannot, connect, I just right? cannot connect with any other Chinese school except for like these two kids that can speak English. I was okay. I know these two can be my friends because yeah. they speak English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for me, I just don't want to be associated with anyone. Wow. Yeah. I, I like to talk to introverted kids because I feel like actually they... Slowly over time, they open up and it's very fulfilling as a teacher to see them start uh. opening up. So I try to talk to them one-on-one -on -one, or like I just keep trying to talk to them and it's only they'll talk to me. <laughs> to like, it's like, okay, I need to talk to her. She's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like, How this teacher? Yeah. But yeah, I always try to like, maybe I compliment their homework or I just ask them, how's your day? And then they're just like, okay. But slowly, slowly, then they feel like they can talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's one girl in my class, like when I first started teaching, she's very quiet. Then slowly... I think she also start to get used to her friends. Mm -mm. Then she start to share more. So I think that's very nice like, to see. What if you face a very difficult kid that don't, don't listen to you? Okay, my first year teaching, I was in the US, right? So it's like I'm very new and like it's a new environment as well. And I have one kid um, in primary one. So he never, he never went to kindergarten. So he don't really understand what school is like. And he just like always talk and scream and like make a lot of like noise in my class. And then there was one time like I had a fight I guess with him where I tried to get him to like pay attention and be on task. But he like cannot take it right. So he went around my room, my classroom and started throwing the chairs, tearing my paper, oh. flipping all the pencils, right? And I cried. I was like, oh my god. This is like such a terrible... You cried. Yeah. You know, I cried. I tried. I was like, why well, you have to do this to me? But he don't care, obviously. He just let me oh, cry. Oh, you cried in front of him? Yeah, because oh. I was like, oh my god. I was like so stressed out. Because it's like, I think it's my first two weeks of teaching. Ah, uh, okay. But I think with that kid, slowly I learned how to... Um, get him to stay on task. So instead of like scolding or like being very firm... Uh, with him, I use a lot of positive reinforcement. 
You know, it's kind of like when you have a pet and you just like, good job, like when they yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. So same with kids. Um, so whenever um, he is like very quiet, then I purposely praise him very quiet, sound like that. Like, wow, like you're doing such a good job. Everybody look at him, he's so quiet. Then he'll be very happy. Then he'll feel very like happy, right? Then he'll like continue to be quiet. Oh, that's a very nice trick. Actually. Yeah. Because I feel, this is what I feel about Asian parents. Yeah. They never compliment one. Yes. Never compliment their children. My mom compliment right. a lot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like a lot of Asian families don't feel very gangga to compliment yes. children. Like they won't even until now actually. I I feel that a lot of parents don't know how to compliment. Okay, they feel very gangga. Yeah. Can you teach them like parents that is watching? Mm. Actually put some gangga. Maybe because they have not been complimented by their parents or like their mm. so this is not a very normal thing for them it's like, not a normal thing for them but I think it's really healthy for your kid to know what they're good at because it helps to build confidence as mm. well so even though it's like it's a little bit at first you need to push yourself to yeah. do it I feel because you need to get used to it la. yeah correct how do you do it? bullying kids bullying each other very tough, honestly. Like, I believe that bullies bully because maybe they get bullied or maybe they have some thing that's underneath. Like, I don't think kids are just like bad people, right? They bully mm. maybe because they feel hurt or they want to feel powerful <coughs> or they get bullied by their other siblings. So they come to school and then they'll try to bully someone else. I'm bully fast but just trying to understand like why they are like this and really giving them a space to feel safe to share their feelings with you, which is a culture that you set from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're trying to get bullied, I think also teaching them to say no. So in class, we teach them like, if you get bullied, what should you do? Like, shouldn't be quiet. Yeah. You just tell a teacher. Um, but also making them feel confident. Because usually mm -hmm. confident kids don't really get bullied. Mm -hmm. People who like, they just don't care. Yeah. So you teach yeah. them all these strategies of like, realizing that, no, no one can bully me. Like, you don't, you don't have access to like, say yeah. these things to me. Being a parent as well, some parents actually bully their own kids without exactly. knowing. Yeah. So what are the traits that makes them feel it's a bully because some people don't know they just say things so as a parent sometimes you don't know right? correct yeah. I think the most like obvious one is mm. you're angry so you don't get angry in your child's it's a kind of bully man. like you mm. angry and then like the kid don't do anything wrong but then you get mm. angry which is actually very normal mm -hmm. sometimes like let's say you have a hard day at work you come back home then your kid like very noisy mm. they just scream 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 then your kid's like shocked yeah, yeah. right so it's about making sure that you don't release your emotions negatively on your kid. But sometimes you do it and it's normal because you're yeah, human. Yeah. So just like apologizing to your kid. I think it's one thing that can Put really the parent help. ego down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is parents, not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Aww. But it's very important. So yeah. parents out there, yes. if you have <laughs> ego problems, please deal with it. Yeah. 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 I see a lot of videos of you. But can you tell the audience what do you actually teach? <laughs> <laughs> I teach life skills. So previously last year, I taught like things like uh, financial literacy, sex education, gardening, cooking, all these like sen but more in a fun way. Then mm. right now, I just focus on teaching mental health. When is the right appropriate age to talk to them mm. about sex education? So in my class right now, mm. from primary one, right, we teach them about safe touch. Mm. Because like no one can touch your private parts. And these are things that only you can touch. So like from there, you slowly teach about boundaries and you teach about consent. And I think even primary five, primary six, they start to like boys and girls, right? They like mm. each other and stuff like that. Like they want to date. So it's about like, okay, when you are dating, what is consent? Like, mm. should you, can you kiss someone without them letting you kiss? That's slowly, it's like talking about, it's like related to sex mm. education. Mm. Uh. Then in secondary school, we talk about like condoms, right? Like you have to use condoms and how can you get STDs? A lot of people don't really know. They just yeah. think like there's only one way to get STDs which is through like penetrative sex but there are other ways as well. Yeah. So I tell them about the risk and I also tell them about consent because mm. I feel like risk and STDs like I guess sometimes school will teach you but yeah, they don't really teach you about consent which is like when is it appropriate to like have sex with someone? Yeah. If they are drunk, can you have sex with them? You know, can they give consent? Yeah. Oh, so I teach about this kind of things. Yeah, I really scared that my kids grow up and they do yeah. something. They don't know, right? They yeah, think it's okay. Scary, yeah. yeah. So I just saw you from this video, <laughs> the emotional damage video. Um, have you been doing a lot of videos before this? Mm, I started about one and a half years ago on TikTok. So 
um, I tried to do different videos and I realized that teaching videos were what people like to watch. So I kept creating it. And I also enjoy making fun videos in school. So I was slowly, slowly growing and then the emotional damage video just went crazy viral. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, everyone in the world, actually, not just Malaysia, yeah. It was everywhere, yeah. yeah. So that one, like, really spiked my my growth uh, online. Actually, I don't even know this whole emotional damage <laughs> vibe. I, it's not it's so, like, true But I was just teaching this class. So usually, I just film when I'm teaching. Mm -mm. And then after that, I will go back and cut, like, what I think is funny in class. Mm. So this part, actually... I only posted this video because I had no more videos to post. And I'm like, I just simply post that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know this was like a thing. Yeah. I have no idea how it went viral. So this one is, this video was not planned. It was just a thing. But I want to ask, does your school know about this? At first, they didn't know. Because I just like do it for fun. I didn't think that I would grow, right? And then slowly they knew. Um, I didn't tell them formally. But then one day my principal came into the office. It's like, marketing department wants to talk to you. I'm like, oh. Like, I'm dead, I'm dead. Yeah. And then he's like, they love your video. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> they would love for you to like post more and share more about our school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I work very closely with the school to like promote events and stuff like that. How do you cope with being a public figure now? Mm. Uh, maybe you can give me some advice <laughs> how to cope. Because you, you, for me, I have, I'm not like, I didn't grow suddenly. I don't have like a viral thing. So mm. it slowly grow. So for me, Always stay humble, like, that's okay. Mm. Yeah. And when someone say hi to me, just say hi back. Mm. But I'm not sure if your followers is like my followers. My followers are like, super nice. They are super calm. They don't really catch up when you don't do anything. Mm. Because your followers are probably like kids also, right? Yeah. So I don't know if they know what's the boundaries. Uh, actually, kids are the best. Like, they're very, they're usually very shy and then they'll yeah. pull their mom. Like, that's oh, why. So cute. Yeah. And then the mom will be like, Oh my god. So no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My daughter say you're famous, but I, I never seen you before, but yeah. she wants to take a picture like that. Yeah. Um, most of the time, it's okay. But, like, sometimes random, like, guys will mm. come up to me, and that's, like, when I feel a bit weird. Because mm. it sometimes people don't really understand your personal space or they ask you a lot of questions that feel very invasive. I feel one thing about it because sometimes they watch your video too much. They felt like a friend. Correct. But we don't know this person at all. Yeah. Most of the time people are very nice. They just ask a picture, ask a few questions. But yeah, maybe sometimes when they're too excited and then like I get shocked because they seem like mm. yeah, you're right. They seem like they know you a yeah. lot. They know so many things yeah, about you. Yeah, they do. They actually do because oh. they watch literally all your videos. Right? Yeah. Um, but for us, we don't know anything about them. So I think one thing we should tell anyone who is watching, we want to go out to, to Suchi, maybe just say hi. And, you know, if you want a picture, get a picture. Not to like, oh, come yeah. to you, right? Yeah. A bit scary. When you're a alone, especially. Yeah. yeah. So as a content creator, would you be very careful of what you put out also? Because especially you're, you're a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And then you don't want something that is came out from you. I think maybe I'm more like, clumsy like that I'm very I'm like oh anything is okay lah. I don't yeah. think too much about yeah. it um, which I feel like as I grow I need to be more mindful about what I say because mm. last time I just use social media to share all my thoughts and yeah. when it's my own friends they don't really care you know they just know they know who I am and they know these are just yeah. my thoughts but now as I grow random people like have access to my thoughts and then they have their own opinions or yeah. they can twist things in a way that I didn't intend to. Mm. So yeah, I'm learning <laughs> to be more careful online. Maybe you can share one of the tips for parents that are watching, future parents that are watching uh, on a tip of how to navigate your children on using social media platforms. I think there are a lot of very good um, platforms and like sites that have kid-friendly versions. So like YouTube Kids, Netflix Kids, a bunch of others as well. So I think Parental control is great. I think trying to set a limit also. I used to mm. hate it when my parents would set limits. But I think it's good that you give kids a balance. So they're not on their phones all the time. They can also play outside. Don't take away social media completely because that's how they interact. And that's our mm. generation now. That's mm. how they learn about... That's why kids are so smart nowadays. They have yeah. access to so much information. So I think a healthy balance is, is good. Mm. For me, I, I don't know if it's the right way. But I would actually sit and watch together and oh. then be engaging with the children like whatever you see here this one like that then just scroll away yeah so at least they know this is not right correct All right. okay it's coming to an end but it's not the end yet <laughs> since you're a teacher yeah. I'm going to give you some quiz Whoa, what <laughs> <laughs> yeah some quiz um are you ready for this no no <laughs> I'll try to be 
You can one. Okay, you okay. can. Because it's not that hard, but it's hard for me also. Okay. okay. Let's do this. What is 7 times 8? 56. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stressed out. <laughs> okay. What month of the year has 28 days? Every month. Oh my god. <laughs> I would have said February. <laughs> I would say I cannot be a teacher. Okay, this one is a bit hard. What's the height of Petronas Twin Towers? Wow, I have no idea. It's 452, 452 meters. So like who the hell would know, right? <laughs> I have I know. No idea. Nobody would know. I know it's, it's 88 floors, right? Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, true or false? This is a question of true or false. Mm. Ha, this one, very hard. Huh? Penguins can fly. No, they cannot fly. Yeah. Wait, when you say very hard, then it makes me think, you know, like, huh? is this a trick question? Yeah, they cannot fly. <laughs> what does SPF stand for sunscreen? Ooh. Sun protection. I don't know. SPF. I have no idea. Factor. Factor. Sun protector factor. To be honest, I, I make sunscreen, but I also don't know the whole thing. Okay, sun protector factor. Now I know. Can you say this? Tongue twister, wow. You are actually so also putting me it. into test because I'm the worst. She's <laughs> <laughs> she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, she's better than me, la. I'm worse. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suchi, for actually joining us this time round. And if you want to check out more of her videos and contents, it's on her TikTok and Instagram. We'll put the link down below, up here, anywhere. <laughs> So yeah, um, parents go check it out and thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.